Welcome to Run of the Love Terrier, who uh, has decided that she needs uh, a little time on stage here. Um, I'm Owen Thomas, I'm the editor in chief of Read Right, and um, this is Read Right Mix. This is our last Read Right Mix of 2013, but we're looking forward to a lot more in 2014. Um, going to make an announcement about that at the, uh, the end of the session. Um, we, uh, we hold this inter intimate interview series in um, a forum that we call Say Space. So what is Say Space? Uh, Rewrite, as you may or may not know, is actually owned by a company called Say Media. They are the publisher of several online brands, including Dogster, Romano Lista, Exo Jane, Passionista. Um, and they have been a great support to Rewrite um, in many ways, including providing us with this great space. So thanks to Say Media and all my colleagues who helped put this together. Um, every, every time you applaud, she's going to jump on the stage. <laughs> I'd like to welcome our very special guest, um, Simon Kalaf, the CEO of Flurry. Simon, yeah. please join us. Thank you. Hello? Yeah. Um, so, why are we here? We are here. Do you want to sit? Yeah, let's sit down. Uh, Ramona's already sitting down. She's so relaxed. Yeah. This is, I, I think this is just how we're going to do it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she obviously runs the show. Um, I mean, Ramona is a very modern dog. She has a, she has a Twitter account and I'm, a Facebook page. I'm a page. follower. Yeah, yeah, but there you go. <laughs> um, but we're, we're living in this kind of amazing moment, the cusp of change, um, which is why I asked you to, to join us tonight. Um, we're in the mobile moment, like sort of that, that time when the lines on the chart intersect. Uh, we just ran a story on ReadWrite about how smartphones in use um, are, have overtaken or just poised to overtake, depending on how you count it, uh, PCs mm -hmm. in usage, in like actual usage. Um, so this is it. Like This is what we've been talking about. Um, but for, for the audience members who may not have heard of Flurry, um, could you tell them a little about the company um, and kind of where you got started and what, what you're doing now? Sure. Uh, first, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Welcome. And uh, we are living the moment, and we're not alone. There is 1.3 billion people living it at the same time. And you're right. The, the, if you add smartphone and tablets, they have eclipsed PCs. Uh, in terms of ac ac active usage. So it is the time. It is that point in time. And actually, we're here. Month. We're here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, as far as Flurry is concerned, we've been blessed to work with app developers from, from actually the beginning of time, uh, mm -hmm. when the, we started before the App Store. And uh, we provided analytics for app developers. And uh, you know our strategy has been work with these phenomenal developers, give them great analytics tools. And from there, you know, we added advertising products. Mm -hmm. So uh, an ad trading platform. And, and by the way, just to dive into this a little, sure. analytics is everything you're doing in an app can be captured and recorded and Analyze. Are you, you know, are people hitting this button up here or that, that button down there? Yes, you you do get like basic a basic package that tells you basic usage. Then you can go deep. We also give them audience tools, so uh, we tell them who is using their apps, like age, gender, and something we call personas, <laughs> like mm -hmm. like for example, an avid runner or uh, a business traveler, and mm -hmm. they can cut their data any way they want. We also give them benchmark tools to see how they're doing against people of the same category. We don't do like mm -hmm. Snapchat versus Line or yeah. so on and so forth, but it's more you know the the, uh, the 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 categories so a lot of and we add about 20 22,000 mm -hmm. apps a month we add and about 440,000 apps uh, 137,000 developers and 1.3 billion devices and 1.3 trillion data points a month well wow. 1.3 trillion data that's points. Right. so that's like every action someone takes right and like that's loading a, a video clip or right. sending yeah. uh, sending a message sending a picture uh, you know, jump in a level, uh, buying something, selling something. And, and this is, so you're covering all of this mobile activity. 
That is correct. On smartphones and tablets. Right. We, we believe it's hard to see what our market share is, but Comscore releases data mm -hmm. and we try to triangulate. We believe we see it between 37% as the most conservative and 43% the most aggressive of everything that happened on a mobile device, whether it's mobile web or mm -hmm. app. Well, that is, that is amazing. And your iOS, Android? Phone, um, Windows Phone, Java, mm -hmm. Blackberry, uh, HTML5, uh, that, that, I think that's it. That, that, that should cover, that yeah, should cover, cover yeah. high 90s. Right. Um, so we're in this mobile moment. Mobile is becoming routine. Maybe we can start by talking about what just happened with the holiday shopping season. We used to talk about Black Friday, you go to the physical store. Cyber Monday, you go back to work, work right. where you have internet and you buy stuff. That's not how we live today, is no. it? No, we actually, IBM beat us to some numbers mm -hmm. when we did release uh, kind of our Thanksgiving report. And yes, we saw a major spike in usage. And, mm -hmm. But we struggled with an angle because mm -hmm. what, it, what we saw is people actually lived on their device. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, they did, uh, they did a little bit more shopping, they did a little bit more reading, a little more gaming, but it's not that we saw a massive spike. Mm -hmm. And it told us that, look, there's no more Black Friday or Cy Cyber Monday shopping has become you know, 24-7, 365 activity, and there's deals everywhere. And mm -hmm. that's one thing. The second thing is, you know, out of 1.3 billion people, only like 250, 300 million mm -hmm. celebrated Thanksgiving. You're right. So we, we're starting to forget that the Western world is not no longer the dominant world in mobile. And, mm -hmm. you know, China is the largest country on flurry. Right. So we, we, probably on Chinese New Year, we're mm -hmm. going to have a story to tell. But I think uh, um, it, it means that anything, you, the consumer has become in control, not the mm -hmm. retailer and, and, and not the provider. You can do everything whenever you want. And that's kind of what we're seeing as a big change. So I think Black Friday happens every moment now. Right on. And I, I mean, anecdotally, we seem, to, we seem to be having that happen, all the major online retailers. Like the sales are just rolling in, rolling in, rolling in. Yeah. God bless consumerism. Early. Right, that's true. Yeah, and then you know we, we see that a lot of people, it's actually living on demand versus mm -hmm. like TV on demand or, or any, it's everything you want on demand, a cab on demand. Mm -hmm. Like just imagine right. your life without Uber. <laughs> that was like six months ago. It's, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's how I got here this morning, yeah. I'll, I'll be so, honest. And it's the same thing. It's shopping on demand. I'm like 3 a.m. in the morning. I can't sleep. Wake up. A couple of buttons. Ah, Retail Me Not has a great coupon on something. You do it. Mm -hmm. one, one thing, though, that is an implication of this crossover in the lines, um, mobile devices overtaking desktop devices, is that the desktop is kind of, you know, mobile eating the desktop is not the story. So what, what comes now? Well, if I it's mean, just mobile. It's, it's not just mobility. It's mm. the, there's several things going on. The fact that I can reach you any time I want mm -hmm. is interesting. Uh, and that has implications to society, has implication to how news disseminates, to how communication happens. So th that concept of just, like, I can reach you is, mm -hmm. is, import, is very important. Uh, the second thing is, you know, the ability, the fact that the device is with you all the time and you can do things whenever you think about it. You don't have to wait till you go to your desktop or to your lap or whatever mm. and, do, and do something. It, it changes a lot of things. Again, from news to communications to shopping to, 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 to anything you want. And the third thing is like we've been dreaming about having like a computer in somebody's pocket. I remember, you know, at a, at a conference in 1999, uh, I, was, I was at Novell and I was talking about, you know, data will be at, at a storage facility, which right. is the cloud, but I didn't know it was the cloud. And computing will become in small pieces that are attached to the human body. And that was 1999. Now when it's when hard drives were probably like, what, 20 megabytes and we were and using... heavy. Yeah, right. And data was what, CDPD, which was yeah, like... Yeah, it was, yeah, I mean... You know, I started That's really yeah. slow for yeah. you young people out there. Yeah. I mean, I had, like I started working, I had to beg for eight megabytes of storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and on a mainframe. And so, how, much, how much storage do you consume now at, God, at Flurry? God, like, oh, I, I don't even know. We, we take in, like, about four billion, uh, 
closer to 40 billion transactions a day. Well, wow. I don't know how much storage that is. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's going to be easily yeah. easily terabytes. When yeah. So when so I mean, it. what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like what's going to happen is every industry is being mm -hmm. disrupted. And there like the opportunity is limitless and we we meet with brilliant developers mm -hmm. like you know, we had company probably one not good mentioning names that are now multi-billion dollars, they were three people with an idea. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of innovation from trying to disrupt FedEx to trying mm -hmm. to disrupt you know, transportation, medical science, uh, things that you thought could not be disrupted because mm -hmm. governments get involved and whatever. Or it's just but too slow or too okay. slow. Right, so I think a lot of things are gonna change. But the things that, that I think we, we, we kind of predicted at the beginning of the year and are m materializing at the end of the year is the messaging and chat apps have become kind of the dial tone mm -hmm. of, of the mobile industry. So uh, whether it's Line in Japan, Kakao in, in, in Korea, uh, uh, Snapchat or mm -hmm. WhatsApp in the United States. So that has become a layer right. on top of mobile. That's very interesting. We can come back to that if you want to go deep on that. The second thing is media and entertainment. Like mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year, we saw the studios like bypassing the cable companies and putting content uh, in their applications. I mean, today Warner Brothers, I was mm -hmm. just telling you, announced that they're going to put all their classic movies in their right. Warner Brothers app. That's, that's, that's television. Turner Classic Movies, exactly. that's a cable channel. It's a cable channel. So now available in streaming, so that's occurring at a faster pace. And last but not least, shopping, which mm -hmm. uh, we believe retailers finally woke up and realized that the mobile application is a walking point of sale terminal versus, versus a brochure. Mm -hmm. And that changes their mindset, that you know, iBeacon is gonna introduce you know, Apple's mm -hmm. new technology to, to, for, to transmit something when you're in proximity of an item or an aisle. That's going to change the shopping mentality, but the ability of a retailer to engage with the consumer when they're mm -hmm. sitting on a couch with a tablet or where they're in an aisle with a phone or where they're in a bus with a phone mm -hmm. changes everything you do from where you place the items on the shelves to the offers you give a consumer and to the, give them the ability to kind of live with them. Right. And that's fascinating. So I, wanna, I do want to dive into messaging, sure. but first I, I just want to really think this through. You know what you're talking about is all these all these behaviors being becoming mainstream, common and accepted for consumers, also well understood by big established players. Um, we're no longer seeing you know the phenomenon where a quote unquote mobile first startup comes and grabs a lot of share because people are not paying attention. It's it's not mobile versus desktop. It's mobile versus mobile. That is correct. It's so, mobile versus mobile. That's correct. And it's mobile versus physical, and it's mobile versus establishment. It is. It mm -hmm. is definitely like I compare it to the industrial revolution, mm -hmm. right? It takes time, and, but we still today are receiving the dividends of the industrial revolution, which mm -hmm. is the steam engine eliminated the near need for massive labor to mm -hmm. produce fast. And I think like m mobility is has created a massive platform for people to communicate. Like there was an obsession mm -hmm. with computers displacing humans. Right. Now it's humans displacing some computing power. Mm -hmm. Give you an example. Look at, for example, Twitter mm -hmm. compared to Google News. Google News is a phenomenal engine that mm -hmm. discover things and look at trending. In Twitter, yourself, myself, mm -hmm. we are curating content. Right. We are investing, like I, I follow you, and I look mm -hmm. at what you do, and I follow a lot of people in the Valley, they are curating content. They're investing some brain power, some of them for vanity, mm -hmm. the others is good, but it's humans working together and using mobile as a communication mm -hmm. platform to help discover and disseminate news. Mm -hmm. Look at Waze right. as an example. Like people are driving cars, they self-report accidents and whatever, curated, mm -hmm. delivered to the consumer. So it's a very interesting trend in which right. you're using the distributed computing power of the brain of 1.3 billion people to deliver a service. Right. So, um, and we have these new devices coming on board that we haven't really figured out, talking about human, human interactions. Like, this one, is, this one has decided to just go off on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but that's feeding more data into our mobile devices. And like, that's another revolution that we haven't really figured out. 
We, we think it's an extension. Like, mm -hmm. like Flurry data suggests people are wearing their devices. Right. Like, like, like I can talk about myself and I can talk about the Flurry data. Yeah. Like I don't leave my iPhone anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like even when I'm asleep, it right. is within two feet from me. That's the thing that wakes me up and I'm on it all the time. So it's a reflection of what I do. And um, the wearable is simply an extension of mm -hmm. that. So, but our data suggests that devices and apps are being used 24-7, 365. Mm -hmm. So, and I think we published this in May, we showed the usage throughout the day. Mm -hmm. and so people are wearing their devices. So what the wearables will do is... So the phone is a wearable. It is a wearable. Yeah. It's in my pocket. I mean, right. it's more accessible than my wallet. Mm -hmm to me. Like wallet, I don't touch it at night. Yeah. I mean, there, there are a lot of devices, I test them all the time for my Read Write Body series, mm -hmm. um, where it seems like a lot of the value is just going to flow into the phone. Actually, Fred Wilson wrote about this That's recently. Right. That's right. Um, where like, if all the device is is an accelerometer, mm -hmm. well, your phone already has that, sure. so try again. Um, heart rate is interesting, though, mm -hmm. because you can't, you can't do that in a phone. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's probably going to be some distributed sensors. That is correct, yes. And there's a lot of applications that are hard to do w w with a phone. Like think of like telemedicine. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a physician and you're, you're operating on a, on, a, on, a, on a person, if you want to get assistant, you're, it's hard for you to grab a phone and then yeah. have a scalper. So the, the Google Glass will help. Um, you, there's many other applications like mm -hmm. that, a customer support. Like right. think about it, you know, a lot of times when you call somebody, they happen to be in Ukraine or India and whatever. Mm -hmm. And if they're seeing what you're seeing without them asking you to put PC anywhere or whatever, yeah. right? If you're trying to assemble something, let's say you bought something from Ikea, I always cannot right. assemble. Yeah. Like, well, no matter what I do, there's always a missing screw or missing something. If somebody can see what you're doing, they can help you. Right. And it's cumbersome to hold your phone on a tablet. Right. So there's things that remove the requirement for a hand that I think will be a good application. But that doesn't mean that you cannot like, select your phone as a hub. Like right. in traditional networking, the Cisco router was the hub for networking. Mm -hmm. You can make that device whether it's low energy Bluetooth or anything, and connect these mm -hmm. accessories to it, and let it be the hub that reports to the cloud. Every, that every one, yeah, every one of these things seems to require a phone as the, you know, as the, the hub. Yeah, or, as the hub, yeah. the configurator, the, you know, the uplink to the internet. Mm -hmm. So they don't really, rep you, you don't see wearables replacing <laughs> smartphones. I don't think so. It's too early for, for that shift to occur. Mm -hmm. uh, it will complement. And if the technology, you know, like becomes smaller, mm -hmm. you still need the ability to talk, right? Right. Uh, or you need the keyboard, right, uh, to do something, or you know, touch. Yeah, you need that you screen. Need, you you need can't. That, you can't right. put a four-inch screen. That's correct. On. Right. Yeah. That's correct. You still need to do something. But I personally don't see that you know, wearables is going to be a revolution to the smartphone and tablet revolution. It's going to be an extension and evolution to the, right. the existing revolution. It, it probably adds utility to, that is correct. to mobile devices. That is correct. Yeah. And if anything, powers that revolution. That is correct. It's so, a booster. Right. So the mobile revolution is continuing. Um, what's happening to the carriers who you know, really brought, the, brought this to us? Um, you know, for all for all their troubles, building you know building those cell phone towers and those you know and those like fiber to, optic networks, we'd like to thank send them a thank you card <laughs> for uh, supporting this. And you know, today it's interesting. AT and T announced that the the days of subsidizing a device might come to an end. You know, what we're seeing is the the these chat apps uh, have added voice. Mm -hmm which is interesting. Right. So telephony is disrupting telephony. Mobile is disrupting mobile. So kind of it's eating its own. And um, we run a lot of these apps. And I do track how many international calls occur on mm -hmm. these apps. And it's fascinating. Like, uh, you know, we, we did disclose some numbers about, you know, that, that are public that most of these, the, like WhatsApp and Line, what have you, are larger than the telco mm -hmm. in the country that they, they are based in. So, and they provide, they already wiped out $23 billion of SMS revenue to these carriers. You're right. So they are- why are, you, if, why are you going to pay, you know, right. pay by the message for exactly. texts? If, so- If you can Snapchat. Exactly. And, and 
the cool thing about Snapchat, there's no record of the right. communications. And that's usually what people thought mm -hmm. that they had with telephony. Now people know that the NSA yeah. might have a record of it, but that's fine. So there was a perception. So I think there are It turns out that our privacy is right. ephemeral too. So uh, they are being disrupted. That doesn't mean like they're not going to make the revenue somehow, but they're going to make it differently. But their relevance or the reliance on them for innovation is going to diminish. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's an interesting trend. Mm -hmm. But I think we are seeing and witnessing that as we speak. The only country in which uh, the mobile operator has still more uh, subscribers than the chat apps with, is China, in which hmm. China Mobile has about 600 million and Tencent is approaching 400 million. Wow. But the curve, it, and, within and, a year, Tencent right. will And China chat. is like a hotbed for right. these messaging exactly. apps. Exactly. Yeah. What, what do you think, um, the, it feels like in the US we are relatively behind. I don't, you know, tell me if the numbers reflect that kind of feeling, but you know, it seems like we have, you know, We've got email, we've got IM, we've got all of these tools for communicating, and it just feels like um, there's less urgency to switch to a messaging app. Well, we have legacy, mm -hmm. right? I mean, uh, like if you start, like when, when let's say the, 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 the former Eastern world collapsed, mm -hmm. people did not have great telecommunication lines. Mm -hmm. So they built mobile right. because they did not have anything. So if you look at the younger generation in China, a lot of them did not have web email. Mm -hmm. So they started with chat and continued with chat. So I don't think we are behind, mm -hmm. but we are at risk in several dimensions. Uh, the first one, and we talked about it, that you know, during the PC era, 85% of software was manufactured in the United mm -hmm. States, even consumed, mm -hmm. and 15% was everybody else. Now, with app development and mobile, that we are now standing mm -hmm. below 35 to 40% in mm. terms of where the app developer is based. And you look at China, only 16% of the time spent mm -hmm. by the Chinese consumer is in US made software. Mm -hmm. So this should be a wake up call. I think yeah. we're not realizing how bad mm -hmm. it is. That's right. my concern because we always used to think the Chinese are copying. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the developers we're working with in China, they don't want to copy, they want to innovate. Mm -hmm. they're, and they're innovating. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, on WeChat alone, Xiaomi, which mm -hmm. is a cool device manufacturer on mm -hmm. Android, and I'm, I'll argue from the data we see, has the best engagement. And people are loving the UI of Xiaomi. Uh, and that's where Ugo Barra, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who was a VP of product, I think, on very, Android. Very important executive in the Android and, group. Right, Android yeah. world ha, ha, uh, is gone. They distributed mm -hmm. their new device on the chat application, not with China Mobile Store mm -hmm. like we do here. If you have a cool device, you go to Verizon and AT&T and you, you negotiate premium placement in mm -hmm. stores. <laughs> and they put it on WeChat and 150,000 units were sold in 10 minutes. Wow. So they're already innovating. Freemium, virtual mm -hmm. currency, they're innovating in that as well. And we see a vi very vibrant uh, app developer or mobile developing community in China. Oh. So I think, I think Tencent is going to be a company to watch. Like we always look at fa companies mm -hmm. that are adopting mobile, doing mm -hmm. well. Facebook would be one. Tencent would be, I think, the up and comer. That's probably next year will be the number one mobile mm -hmm. content producer in the world. And, uh, and the relative valuations, do you know? Well, Tencent uh, is not public, but it's rumored that it's 120 billion. Well, wow. So it's above Facebook. That is and the numbers probably support think about. that. Um, and Tencent, I, I believe, was rumored to be interested in taking a stake in, in Snapchat. Snapchat. Nothing, right, but, but that nothing did not materialized. materialize. It. However, the, the filing showed that in the previous round, Snapchat had taken some small amount of money from, from Tencent in the previous round. Not Interesting. The, the story that came out today, mm -hmm. the 50 million came from a hedge fund mm -hmm. that had invested in hotels tonight. Right and I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about your recent financing, which I, I think came out through some filings. Right. We, we, yes, we did not talk publicly about mm -hmm. it, and we probably will soon. But we, we did take some money, and we'll probably take more. And uh, I, you know, I think, I think uh, one, um, the, the number I believe that was reported was $12.5 million. That's correct. But the round is not done. Right. So a lot of money is flowing into, into the mobile sector Right. Uh, still. Um, are, I mean, 
Now, obviously, you know, you, you might have a biased opinion on this, or your investors might have a biased opinion, but are the best days of investing in mobile past us, you know, like, are the big returns already, already locked in? I don't or? think so. I, I think we're very early, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's, there's a lot of things that tell us that it's accelerating, not decelerating. Uh, first is the device explosion, right? The people have, m m like 100% is the new norm. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we mean by that is the growth in countries, like between the number of devices at the beginning of the year and the end of the year is doubling still. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the cons there is a middle class that's emerging in countries like China, Myanmar, Vietnam, that can afford Mm -hmm. you know, this technology. So there's a vi very vibrant, uh, you know, middle class that can afford those devices. You have a content explosion on mobile. Like, you still have multi-billion or multi-trillion dollar industries that are still operating on pen and paper. Mm -hmm. Or you look at the cable industry. I mean, it's a ripoff. Right. I mean, the, the consumers are being ripped off. They, they, I mean, it's kind of highway robbery that, that, that can come to mobile as well. Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting to think about like, why do we pay that cable subscription? And it's kind of, it's, my answer is. Because um, you're used to it. Yeah. It, it's, it's a comfort level. Right, it's, yeah. it's sort of decision fatigue. Like sure. if you ask me to figure yeah. out like, how much is HBO worth? How much is Logo worth? Yeah. How much is Bravo worth? I don't really watch right. other channels. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> But like thinking of you know thinking about like what I would pay for just those channels right. is too hard. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. I mean that's why there's a lot a lot of things left to do. I think it, there's more work ahead of us than work behind us, and uh, we're seeing that like the number of apps being submitted to Flurry, and we're kind of a leading indicator. Um, you'd assume that the new apps would be flat mm -hmm. and the cumulative would go up. It's accelerating. And uh, because out of 1.3 billion people, you'll always find 50 million mm -hmm. to use your stuff. Yeah. So let's compare that to 1999, the height of the biggest bubble. The, the, there was only 24 million broadband users. Today, there's 1.3 billion. Mm -hmm. So the signal is multiplied like by, uh, by 50x factor, but so is the noise. Right. So, um, it doesn't mean you're going to monetize 50 million, but you'll find 50 million people to use your stuff. It's kind of like the 50 million is the new 5 million. Right. And, well, and the, the problem is that those 50 million people will, will come and go and they'll be on a new app tomorrow. That's correct. But, but there's, the retention is going up. Mm -hmm. So uh, we actually disclosed that at the beginning of the year that, uh, you know, yes, there is turnover. So if you look at, on average, let's say, uh, Flurry gets, you know, within 17 apps per device, uh, like 60% are new, but 40% are the same. Mm -hmm. So you're starting to see uh, what I call the evergreens. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's definitely not in gaming, because gaming, you kind of beat the game, right. and then you move on. But entertainment applications, utility applications, productivity applications, are definitely have very high retention. Communication, mm -hmm. some of them are 80% retention. Right. And that's something. Because that, once you have a channel right. for your friends. You exactly. It is, it is you, you, and the social, I mean, to me, social has been absorbed by mobile. And Facebook is just this big damn, you know, web yeah. application. But the social is your contact list. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how the social graph is now being fragmented. That, like, and, and, and we see that, like, you don't need Flurry data to tell you that, right? You look at Facebook is a family network. You're not gonna share your pictures with your friends with your aunt. Right. I mean, my dad is on Facebook and it's embarrassing. Like every <laughs> time I put something and he's 82 years old and he's liking and disliking and commenting, I'm like, stop. <laughs> All right, uh, and, and weird articles. And we somehow, all have this problem. Right, and somehow that algorithm figured out that we're related, so it keeps showing him every time I do something. So imagine you're a teen. Of mm -hmm. course, they're not going to be enamored with yeah. Facebook, so they will migrate somewhere else. And if the parents move to Snapchat, then they're going to go to some, something else. It's, it's human nature. So we're seeing social being absorbed by mobile. And, and so that's social, a, social is mobile. Social like is just, mobile. It right. just is part of social it. Social is mobile, right. And, and it's a feature of mobile. 
of a mobile experience. And you look at the, the, the fragmentation of the Facebook experience, and you see it, like Instagram is about sharing pictures, Facebook Messenger is about communications, and Facebook itself is kind of your family album plus mm -hmm. a newsfeed. And there was a very good article over the weekend, I think Mike Isaac wrote it mm. uh, from, I think, All Things D, about what Facebook wants versus what the consumers want. Right. And it's interesting, you know, and I, it was a good, a good perspective on things, that, that consumer want a news magazine. Sorry, Facebook wants the news reader to be news magazine, while consumer want it to be, you know, a picture sharing site. Yeah, Enter so, entertainment. And we're seeing, right, memes. entertainment, memes, yeah. So we're seeing the social experience being broken up into two to three killer apps. And what connects people is a, the, just the, the social fabric. Excellent. Well, I, I think uh, we want to make sure, speaking of what the consumer wants, that we have some time for questions from the audience and from Twitter. Um, I have a colleague watching, uh, watching the Twitter sphere for questions. And uh, we also have microphones, um, the audience. I think, uh, I think I see question up here. If we can get a microphone to you while I take a look at uh, sure. the Twitter questions. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, well, first, I, I looked at your site before I came here uh, just to get up to speed. And it's a great site. It's very informative. Thank you. Thank you. It's really impressive, the, the extent of what you do. So on the one hand, um, correct me if I'm wrong, your company, the business model is obviously big data. What about the opposite? You have hinted at this in some of your comments uh, earlier. What about the opposite end, small data, personal data, where consumers have some control, they have this data that's valuable, and instead of putting it out there anonymously, what's the, 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 your point on consumers controlling that data and perhaps even selling it? For instance, their intent data, what they want to buy and, and, and where they're going to buy it. That's certainly a cognitive asset that's worth something, like a watch or a painting, it has some value. Do you see that uh, impacting the big data end of the spectrum? Sure. I mean, that's not the space we're in. But I mean, first, let me start with, you know, I believe in mobile, the consumer is in con complete control. And, and what, what the, the app, the innovation around application, in my opinion, is a better packaging of the web. Uh, people always say, you know, there is browser versus applications versus, you know, I think the consumer is completely in control. So I'll give you an example. The obsession of websites is search engine optimization, which is how do I get Google to discover me? The obsession of applications is how do I please the consumer who has taken the time to put me on their device and wants to keep me there. So just from that mindset, then you see uh, uh, the consumer being in charge. Now in terms of personal data, right? if you're willing to share, then people are willing to listen. But it has to be packaged. Like, for example, let me give you an example in which you are, how you are sharing your personal data. Uber would be an example. I'm out on the street looking for a cab. Find me a cab close to me. That's something that you're already sharing your personal you're data. Sharing your you're sharing your location. Your location. Your name. Right. And, uh, and also, yeah. it's intent. You, that is, you're, you're you have a very clear intent. intent. Same right. with TaskRabbit. Right. There's a lot of companies. Absolutely. Absolutely. What, what if you took that to a higher level and, and consumers could intent cast, as it were, which is what Uber no, is. No, yeah. They, they, they want to buy a refrigerator or a stove but or I think, a TV. I, I think <laughs> what we found like in, in the whole app universe is that rather than there being a exactly. central pool of intent, the way we have in, when we search on Google, exactly. Google is like a big blob exactly. of intent. Exactly, right. But you're changing that model. You're actually, I agree with you. Like the consumer had to do a lot on the web. I mean, look at your experience on the web. Like websites became lazy. They depended on Google for everything. And uh, on August 16th, Google went down for five minutes. 40% of the web went down with it. So uh, it, it, like the application space is better packaged. So rather than having like an intent cast, like, okay, today I need somebody to pick up my laundry versus I, uh, uh, I need the cab or I need whatever, launch the app that's focused. I need a cab right now, you get a cab. And you need somebody to pick up your laundry, you got Task Rabbit. You, you need to contribute location to ways you, you, you can do that. And there's many, many services like that. Parking finders would be another example. So I'm not sure that you need to restitch the, the app space using intent. Like, however, marketers might be interested in something like that. 
So I think you're going to see a lot of innovation around what, what you're referring to, but I think it's going to remain focused in which the experience is packaged by the provider, delivered in an application, without relying on the consumer to hop between app and app and web and app and app and web in order to get something done. So whether it's payments, whether it's commerce, whether it's being served for anything you do, I, 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 think, it's, uh, I think it's not going to happen. Sure. And, uh, and Simon, we're, we're getting questions from Twitter that basically boil down to where can they get more statistics, more data? Um, they'd like to know the most surprising statistics about mobile. Um, where can they, you know, do you have a few you can throw out and where can they get more? Yeah, there's quite a few. I mean, we, we always put things on blog.flurry.com. I think the biggest thing that, that we're seeing is insane growth, the, the, an accelerating growth the past uh, three months. We've grown 10% that since the beginning of December in terms of consumption. And it, we, we're, 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 as a company, we're putting all the resources to be holiday ready mm -hmm. because like the curve is scary in terms mm -hmm. of usage. And it's across the board, uh, uh, gaming, So it's no longer Amazon that's, right. that's just ramping up for no, the no, holidays. No, no, we, we do not have a choice. Like, like the whole company mm -hmm. is on red alert. So the entire platform team, the data center team, they're on red alert because we're seeing massive amount of growth. So the, the things, like I said, that surprise us the most is the growth in communications app, media and entertainment, and the 24-7, 365 shopping activity. Like, literally, as, as a team, when we were discussing, you know, where is Black Friday? Mm -hmm. And we realized it was Black like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, right, Friday. Right, you just, you, you don't, you don't you find don't the, the spike on the curve. Right, anymore. you don't. Well, it is, but it's not dominant. It's right. not that, that, you know, retailers have to put everything into that last month. <laughs> there is a Christmas Day, Boxing Day occurring every day. And, and it's fascinating. It, again, the, the, my thought is the consumers is now fully in charge. And again, like if there's message to developers, consumers first, not mobile first, consumers first. Do not think about optimizing for search engines. Don't think about optimizing for, for or cutting a business deal with a carrier. It does not matter. If you have a great experience for customers, discovery is not broken. Mm -hmm. People will discover you. They're, they'll find a way. It's mm -hmm. fascinating. I mean, there's but, services. But there, I mean, people, people are trying, like, I have seen more apps trying that, that route of mm -hmm. cutting a deal with a handset maker mm -hmm. or a carrier as kind of a way to cut through the noise. Uh, and you don't think that's going to work? It doesn't last. Yeah, it does not last. It, it, is, it dies on the vine, right? I mean, and, and if you look at, for example, when, when, when Yahoo was the gateway to information with mm -hmm. MyYahoo, if you did not have a deal with MyYahoo, you did not exist. Right. Where is that now? Right. I, oh, I remember right. Pets.com exactly. had the deal right. with, you know, to yeah. power Yahoo Pets. Right. And yeah. <laughs> where right. are both of those today? Right. <laughs> so, right. And, and Google has done a phenomenal job, right, in, in stitching the, 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 the internet together. But that's not the mobile experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, that the consumer is, is in charge. And there's so many ways to, 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 to get discovered. But the key thing here is about the consumer experience. Um, someone just asked on Twitter, of course, for you to define mobile in 140 characters or less. <laughs> everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything. That is a very good definition of mobile in this day and age. Um, would you say app development is data driven today and could it be more so? Great question. Parts of it is not. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but segments are getting better at it. So uh, the folks who are making money mm -hmm. are data driven. So gamers, travel, retail, mm -hmm. and, uh, including M commerce, they're very data driven. And you know, they're no longer, I'd say, marketers, they're scientists. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good thing for us. Um, and I believe that in the next five to 10 years, the hand-waving era of advertising is going to stop. Yeah. Like those panels to do brand lift studies or who went to the store and whatever, you know, is going to stop because science is being brought to retail, commerce, and, and gaming. But Soon you will know, like, yeah. you know, you'll know, like, this person pulled up your app. You bet. And then this person, that same person walked into your store. Right. And you know that for a fact and that you don't have correct. to do a study to guess at it. Absolutely. Like you look at I, the innovation with, I, with iBeacon, I'm, I'm very passionate about this because, you know, you struggle to, to, to uh, you know, as a marketer to justify 
the money you're spending. But if you can prove I spent a dollar and then I sent four people to the store and they bought a hundred dollars, you can spend that dollar all the time, right? And you know, in, in television, it stopped at the impression and everything else Nielsen took care of it, right? Google stopped at the click. Mobile has the opportunity to close the freaking transaction. I got yeah. you a sale, so don't argue about the marketing right. dollar. So I think that's why, you know, as marketers, you know, we need to be very excited about this. But coming back to the definition of mobile, I think that's a good question because, you know, the thing we're going to see in 2014 is the disruption of the television industry. Mm -hmm. And I'm not predicting or we've seen the Apple TV or anything like that. Whether it's Apple or Samsung, somebody's going to ship a television that looks like a big flat iPad. And the app are going to invade it. Like the Apple TV today looks like my phone, but it's a puck that you connect to the, to the TV. But the business model will emerge. And uh, I believe television stations are going to be applications. Yeah. And they're, each one are going to differentiate themselves by the content and by, by the business model. Some of them will go the subscription route. Some of them will go the freemium route and, and ad sponsored. And I think TV advertising is going to mm. absorb digital <laughs> versus digital I mean, absorbing it, it, TV. <laughs> it, it may actually go further. Like we may yeah. break down the whole idea of a channel. One one wag on Twitter asked yeah. me which which Real Housewives uh, series I follow. None of them. Um, <laughs> but uh, but people people don't really follow channels. They follow you know, programs. They yeah. follow programs. Yeah. Uh, I spoke to um, Brendan Lucas, who's the head of digital at BET. BET. Right. And he said they don't make a BET app. They make apps for specific shows. So it's fragmentation. They, right. They're building a community around specific shows. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it will fragment that much. Uh, you know, for the successful shows, yes, like Breaking Bad and, and, and like the hits, yes, right. you would do that. But if you look at what's interesting, again, if we learn from the international markets, you know, all these shows that you vote, mm -hmm. like the equivalent of American Idol and The Voice and right. whatever in Japan, they all have their own apps. So they don't use the SMS channel in order to vote anymore. Right. So you down, you, in order Save to vote- Save lots of money. And, right. Exactly. You download the app and you engage with and you become a participant right. in the show. And, then, and you have that much more loyalty. Yeah. And the, what's interesting is there is a lot of headroom. Like, uh, let's say if the average American consumer is paying $100 a month in order uh, you know, to get cable and you look at how many hours you actually spend per month, you're actually paying a lot more than mm -hmm. entertainment on a mobile device, whether it's gaming or media and entertainment. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of headroom. I, we, right. we calculate there's about $80 a month of headroom you know, for equivalent hour of entertainment right. between what you get on mobile compared to what you get from cable. The barrier is that people, you know, they spend that money and then they've got it covered. And they don't like to, you know, especially in, in the United States, I think yeah. they don't like to think about each individual purchase, even if it may that's end up true. being cheaper. That's true. But that's, yeah. you know. The, yeah. Well, bundling is, is a good marketing tactic. Yeah. Right. That, that, that has maybe, worked. But maybe the maybe but Unbundling, I think Fred Wilson talked about that this yeah. week at Loeb. Unbundling is going to be a very interesting thing in which the, the a la carte uh, be becomes more interesting than the Happy Meal. Right. And I think we're going to start seeing that with content as well. Happy Meals are pretty popular. I think, <laughs> I think what we'll see is rebundling right. in new forms. That's interesting. Probably yeah. cheaper. That's cheaper bundling. Just right. a mut, like Netflix would be a good sure. example of, sure. of that rebundling. Yeah, that, I didn't think about it this way, but that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, more questions uh, from, uh, from Twitter. Um, and, and I'll combine these. What do you think is the biggest missed global opportunity in mobile right now? And why do you think Chinese developers are more innovative than American developers? Uh, so for, I don't believe they are more innovative. I'm saying they're innovating, like okay. we're still innovating in as well. In terms of right. results. In, right, in, right. In terms of uh, uh, they are, so for the reason they, like we're talking to them, they're thinking China, Korea, Japan, as they're the same way we think US, Western Europe, and then we call it ROW, rest of world. Yeah. So they do CJK and then rest of world. So they're building content that is uh, culturally safe mm -hmm. and ready for these communities. So they're innovating for that right. market. In terms of missed opportunity for mobile, God, there's tons. Uh, you know, you know m mobile, to me, the way news is being 
d distributed is still broken, mm -hmm. right? I think there's a massive opportunity, uh, you know, to, to disrupt news and 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 media. Mm -hmm. Like, Twitter had has had an impact on you know, uh, countries and culture more than it had an impact on the advertising we're, industry. We're, we're seeing some experiments, right. like Circa News that is, is very correct. interesting in, yes. in terms of quote-unquote mobile first news. Right, right. Um, you know, There's a lot of that, you know, the, the ability to, to get news on demand or push people. Just imagine, you know, that you, you, you want people to go to a place, take pictures and leave. They've got a camera, you got a human you can communicate with and you can go capture that. There's a lot of things that I believe are global in nature, like medical science. I mean, your blood pressure should be 120 over 80, wherever you are. So you can definitely leverage uh, that education. Mm -hmm. There is things that do not require a, a, a border or they can cross a border. Programming languages right. are the same right. worldwide. La labor, labor. I mean, you have cheap labor everywhere and an on-demand labor, like the concept of elastic labor uh, is, is huge. Uh, there's so much opportunity if you think about it that you have 1.3 billion people you can reach Let's say at the same time. I think the flurry network reaches like 400 million people at the same time simultaneously like Facebook probably reaches 800 million people or, uh, Per day and maybe simultaneously 200 million. Well, that's insane If you can press a button and have 200 million people do something if they jump probably the planet will go down but but that concept that you can distribute something uh, to, to that, that Hundreds could be... Hundreds of millions of people. Right, like, like this, like, like so many things could, could, could change. Logistics, uh, transportation, like uh, in give you an example, in order to take a package first same day from uh, San Francisco to Palo Alto, it's $45 plus tax. There's 30,000 people that commute every day from San Francisco to Palo Alto. One right. of them will, will take 10 bucks and take a package. But then you'd say, what about insurance or if they take the package and fly away with it? But that's when I saw the business plan for eBay back in the 90s. That was the first thing I was concerned about. How do you know they're going to ship you the item and who's going to insure it? And if you don't know the seller, but I missed on investing in eBay and I'm still working. So, <laughs> so that tells you that there's so much opportunity. But I think to sum it, to bring it down to one sentence, think of a 1.3 billion labor force that you can tap into. And that's how you think about opportunities. And think consumer first. Not Cons absolutely, yeah, not consumer mobile. first. You're, let, let's make sure everybody understand in mobile, your, your boss is your consumer not your VCs, not your discovery network, not your search engine. It is the consumer. Oh, well, that's a great note to end on. Simon, thank great. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.